Our next speaker is Dr. Robert Schneider. He's a physician and one of the leading authorities on scientific natural approaches for heart disease and cardiovascular risk factors. His topic, total mental health, Dr. Robert Schneider, welcome. Today I'd like to present a model of total mental health or Vedic psychiatry based on principles of Maharshi Ayurveda. Well, why am I doing this after working in the field of heart disease for the past 30 years? We have been looking in the area of preventive cardiology during that time and also simultaneously modern medical scientists have discovered that mental health disorders and psychological stress double the risk of cardiovascular disease. As a matter of fact, stress is as strong a risk factor for heart disease as high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and obesity, conventional cardiovascular risk factors. Why is this? Modern medicine has also discovered that the brain and the heart are connected, primarily through the nervous system and the neuroendocrine system. So changes of mind cause changes in the heart, and mental stress creates cardiac stress. And actually, it's a two-way street. There's also communication back from the heart to the brain. This is not a surprise when you look at Ayurveda because for thousands of years, Ayurveda has described the heart in the chest as the seat of mind and emotions. Therefore, from the Ayurvedic point of view and now from the modern point of view, in order to heal your physical heart, you need to heal your emotional heart. Therefore, Vedic psychiatry is actually Vedic cardiology. We'll take today the primary textbook of Vedic psychiatry as Charak Sanghita. And Charak talks about the tripod of life, mind, body, and soul, or atma. And since soul or atma is the field of pure intelligence and pure balance, then imbalance must arise in body and mind to create disease or creating balance restores health on those levels. Mind is one of the three pillars of life. Charak describes an extensive uh, body of theory and practice of mental health. We heard a bit about that earlier this morning. Charak describes the role of the mind in physical and mental health describes and classifies mental disorders and mental diseases. It has a rich section on diagnosis for mental and emotional factors and describes elaborately methods of treatment and prevention. This is Ayurvedic psychiatry. And there are three types of disease or three causes of disease from Charak's point of view. One is exogenous, or from the environment, the distant environment, including the grahas, the sun, moon, stars, and planets, and then the more immediate physical environment. The second level is called endogenous, or the body. This is what we think about most of the time, but is one-third of Ayurveda, Ayurvedic perspective of health. That is imbalance in the doshas. The third level of causation of disease from Chalk's point of view is psychic or the level of the mind or manas. And this includes psychological distress. So we have environment, body, and mind. This corresponds exactly with Maharshi's first written elaboration that I'm aware of, of health. That was in 1963, Science of Being, Section on Health, where he talks about the four domains of health, environment, body, mind, and pure being, and their interrelationships. That in order to have ideal health, one has to create balance on each of these levels, environment, body, and mind, and their respective connections with the unified field or pure consciousness. And only that is total health. Let's go back to Charak. Charak talks about three levels of treatment corresponding to Maharshi's model 
and Charak's own model. The three levels of treatment are one, diva via pasria, or creating balance in the level of the environment with graha, shanti, jochish, and yagya, we can say. The second level is dealing with the body, yukti via pasria. This is what we think of most of the time as Ayurveda, but again, one third of Ayurveda. This is the rational therapies, physical, physiological therapies, herbs, diet, panchakarma. The third level of treatment that Chirac describes is sattva vijaya. Those are the mind therapies, the mental and psychological therapies. Those are the three pillars of treatment in the Ayurvedic perspective. And for the next few minutes, I'll elaborate more on this third pillar, or sattva vijaya. Chirac describes three within three, three subdivisions within sattva vijaya. The first subdivision we can call supportive and behavioral therapy. The second subdivision we can call deeper understanding and knowledge. The third uh, subdivision we can call deeper experience. So supportive therapy, understanding and knowledge, and then absolute experience. And I'll go into each of these ones first supportive and behavioral therapy. Tarya is the Sanskrit word that Charak elaborates on for this concept of supportive psychotherapy. And that means uh, literally patience, calmness, and perseverance. What does that mean in clinical practice or with your family or with your coworkers? Well, from a health point of view, this means illness, illnesses due to desire, comma, or anger, due to grief, soka, depression, or fear, paya or anxiety should be treated by consolation, tranquilizing methods, and merriment. And these have parallels to the modern uh, area of supportive psychotherapy or counseling, where there's a strong uh, relationship built between the counselor or the physician and the client patient, uh, trust, uh, support of the positive dimensions of the client, problem solving, and building of hope. Sadvritra, or behavioral sign, is also in this first category of supportive and behavioral therapy. And these are the behavioral rasayanas that everyone is familiar with and we were hearing about today. Go to bed by 10 o'clock and you'll be less depressed in the morning. These have parallels to modern behavior therapy. We know, we've heard of cognitive behavior therapy. Behavior therapy or is achara sayan, we can say, behavioral prescriptions for mental health, as well as physical health, because they're interrelated. That was the first domain of Vedic psychiatry. The second domain is this area of understanding and knowledge, gyan and vigyan. Gyan and vigyan, or spiritual knowledge and scriptural knowledge, or deeper knowledge of life. The Bhagavad Gita and Ramayana are examples of conflict and conflict resolution. The technical people would call it intrapsychic conflict, or persons having problems or stress, or a series of stresses and, and conflicts, and they're resolved uh, uh, through counseling, Maharshi calls Vedic counseling, and in Maharaja's commentary on the Ramayana, also it's the story of resolution of conflict, both physiologically and psychologically. The third area of Vedic psychiatry or Sattva Vijaya is this area of deeper experience. We had knowledge and experience, uh, and Chark uses the term smriti and samadhi memory of self and transcending, or we could think of transcending and then regaining memory. Chark explicitly talks about this when he says that happiness or misery arise due to contact of the mind and senses with objects, but when the mind is steadily engrossed in the self, a supernatural power, we could look at the translation of that, comes forth in the person. This state is known as yog. So yog is part of Ayurveda. So that's smriti and samadhi. 
There's elaborate scientific research on the value of yoga as a health therapy. This is one study in a highly stressed population known as college students in Washington, D.C., randomized controlled trial. Uh, the meditators, after one semester, showed reduced anxiety, depression, and anger, reduced vata, pitta, and kapha kinds of mental distress, as well as increased coping ability and less total distress. The high-risk subjects also had lower blood pressure, and other studies uh, show that subjects who reduce their mental stress using yoga, Ayurvedic methods, have lower, hy lower hypertension, lower heart disease, and also they have increased gene expression for a particular enzyme, telomerase, that uh, repairs the DNA and helps to prevent heart disease and slow down the aging process. So we have the molecular changes, we have the physiological changes, we have the clinical changes associated with these changes in mind and mental health. This is the model in summary of environment, body, and mind and their interrelationships and their relationship to consciousness or the unified field. With this model, in order to have total mental health, you need total health on, in each of these four domains. And if you have total health, then you have total mental health. Charak on the total physician. Those who are accomplished in rational administration, those are the body therapies, knowledge and spiritual knowledge, who provide happiness and promote life, who use all three of these levels of therapies, including sattva vijaya, these are the real physicians. Finally, I'd like to announce uh, to this audience that the first medical school program that integrates the knowledge of total health, total mental health, the Maharshi Ayurveda approach to health and integrative medicine into conventional medicine will be beginning this coming academic year in an integrative medicine MD, MS program. Uh, offered by St. Martinus University in Curaçao, the Caribbean, in collaboration with Maharshi University of Management, United States. Students will enroll and they'll study and get the MD degree in modern medicine. And simultaneously, they'll have one class each day uh, and some intensive experiences in Maharshi Ayurveda and integrative medicine. And they'll be, act they'll be able to practice the therapy, the methods of total health including total mental health, Vedic psychiatry, which in the end is total health. Maharshi Arvade, Jai Gurudev. <laughs>